Good day for Georgia fans, bad day for Georgia Tech fans, terrible day yeah. for Atlanta Falcons fan. This is a team, I mean, it, it, to, to call it a total collapse, I, I'm not really sure what else you call it over these last three weeks, particularly the way that this team has lost. You missed three field goals against the Saints in a game that would really get, put you in the driver's seat for the NFC South. You blow this one against the Chargers, a game you probably should have won by two touchdowns because your $150 million, or $180 million quarterback ha looks worse than a rookie. It was, that was worse than any Zach Wilson game I've ever seen. I watched a lot of bad. I bet on a lot of bad Zach Wilson games, and that was just abysmal. I mean, just poor timing, telegraphing passes, uh, you know, statue in the pocket, immobile, uh, some of the craziest decisions you've ever seen from a 13-year veteran, and he's the reason you lose that game. And then sandwich in between all that, you get blown out, embarrassed ahead of your bye week on the Denver Broncos. You're now tied with the Bucks, who didn't necessarily look great, but guess no, what? They, they just keep winning, and, and the Falcons are now finding ways to lose, which has just been the Falcons' M.O. for the last, what, 20 years like we that's what we do ever since Matt Ryan has been here we find new ways to lose thought that was changing under Raheem Morris all that joy and happiness we had about Raheem Morris completely out the window at this point Alex I'm not really quite sure what to think the only thing I'm like well we're tied race to the finish I don't know what else to say but I don't know what to expect from Kirk Cousins I don't know what to expect from the the guys and and how they're gonna play if they're gonna play hard or if they're gonna play soft Kyle Pitts what the hell is that guy doing out there uh, they can't target him. They can't use him. Even when he is target, he he's given up on routes. He looks totally checked out. It's a mess. It's I mean, it's a mess. And you're sitting here six and six, and you're like, damn, where have I seen this before? Oh, only every damn season over the last six years. Yeah, last year exactly. <laughs> last year with a way worse roster, at yeah. least offensively. I mean, we were struggling last year. I mean, defensively too. Like whatever you can say. Like yeah. that we brought everybody back and we added Judon and Justin Simmons and, and we drafted some guy. We drafted four guys in the rounds two through four. And you're worse defensively, you're better offensively, but not by much. And you invested a ton into this roster. I mean, to say this year is an embarrassment, a total failure through 14 weeks, not to say it can't be salvaged. I don't know how you else any way to put it based on what's happened these last three weeks. Yeah, Moxie is cool when your record is zero and zero. And Raheem Morris has plenty of that. It's a lot different when you're six and six. It's a lot different. That, that same cool guy, I'm going to breathe life into the – it's not so cool anymore, and it's it's already – we're 12 games in, and it's seemingly already running stale with the fan base, which is crazy to say because Arthur Smith to Raheem Morris couldn't have been more different in terms of the personalities of these guys. And it just felt like Raheem Morris was maybe potentially going to have like a longer leash, at least with the fan base. It's short. And it just shows you what this Falcons fan base has been through these past few, that they're they're sick and tired of just the same old product. And while I think Kyle Pitts deserves, you know, a lot of uh, flack, uh, but, you know, Kirk Cousins is, is, is to blame here more than anyone. Uh, and maybe Raheem Morris and Terry Fonda too, because they obviously – They brought him in. They brought him in. Um, Kirk Cousins – was never the most physically dominant quarterback in the NFL. Uh, nobody would make that argument. But what made him good is he used his brain, anticipation, accuracy. He, he could read what a defense was doing. That seemingly has gone out the window. He doesn't play on time. He's he, What even little arm power he had is seemingly gone. He doesn't have that little bit of mobility that he did once maybe a little bit have at least you know from a play action standpoint that's gone and when your mind is also not as sharp as whatever it used to be you do you look like I don't know how much worse it could go Michael Penix might throw the same pick but he's throwing it 100 miles an hour and that you know maybe, maybe. they drop it at that point like I don't know what Kirk you know the whole idea what everybody's talking about right now today across Atlanta and across the country, actually, this is a national story now, is what do the Falcons do at quarterback? I'm going to give you my opinion, and I think that you're right to your own opinion, and it all depends on what scope you're looking at. If you're looking at this next week against the Vikings and you're just thinking, who gives us the best chance to win? It's still Kirk Cousins. You know, you'd be a fool to argue otherwise. But if you're talking about the full scope of this organization – I don't even know if it's an argument anymore. You're fooling yourself if you think Kirk Cousins and this Falcons team, as currently constructed, can do anything in the playoffs, let alone make the playoffs. Like, we need to hold off on a potential epic 
collapse that we have had this division lead and the Bucs take it from us. Some people have already predicted it before the Falcons lost this Chargers game that we were going to collapse and give up the division lead. Even if we win the division, what, at 9-8? and eight, You think that this team's going to do anything in the playoffs? No, because then when we lose in a first-round bye in front of our home crowd, we're going to be having these same conversations about what is Kirk Cousins. He's nothing more than an average quarterback at best in this time. So what we are doing is currently what we did in 2022 with Marcus Mariota and Desmond Ritter, where we're wasting valuable time. We can have Michael Penix in, getting valuable experience, building for the future. Instead, we're hanging on to a dream that is all but dead. Yeah, there's absolutely no chance that Kirk Cousins leads this team to a Super Bowl. There's it, it leads this zero team percent zero chance. zero percent chance. Like there, there's no doubt about that. Uh, it was a fun conversation to have when the Falcons yeah, were a month scraping, ago, maybe. scraping by with these wins and stuff. And, and listen, like they're not going to change the quarterback position, which Raheem Morris has already said, simply because they have to save face. They gave right. this guy 180 million dollars. Raheem Morris knows it's he knows he feels the pressure. He knows it's a shorter lease than than Arthur Smith may have had. Now I don't think they're going to fire him, even though I think they should if they don't make the playoffs. But yeah. but that but but. But he knows there's pressure there. He knows they have to save face. He knows they have to make the postseason. He also knows everything's still in front of him. And Kirk Cousins is the safe play to yes. try to get there. But frankly, from a from a fan standpoint, I don't give a crap about safe anymore. I really don't. Like I've watched this organization go with Desmond Ritter and Marcus Mariota for the last two seasons. I've watched them go with with an extra couple of years of Matt Ryan that they probably didn't need to do. They should have ripped the band-aid off there instead of getting into cap hell. Like I'm tired of this pushing the can down the road like we see from the New Orleans Saints, hoping that we're going to be competitive, wasting money on aging veterans like Kirk Cousins and Derek Carr and, and, and wasting future cap space uh, by restructuring contracts because of it. Like, I'm done with it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm done with it. And listen, you drafted a guy eighth overall that you, you apparently loved. You, you loved them so much that you're willing to get smacked in the face by the entire national media after just handing uh, Kirk Cousins. So you're absolutely in love with this guy. Like, what does that say about Michael Penix that you can't move to him? That he's that much worse in practice than Kirk Cousins uh, through 13 weeks of learning the system and, and throwing to these guys. Like, it's just, you know, it's everything that we talked about. Before the season, with Raheem Morris getting hired over some of the other candidates, I'm not even just talking about Bill Belichick, but going with the internal route, keeping this family atmosphere, drafting the quarterbacks, there's going to be this noise when Kirk Cousins inevitably fails, and this has obviously been a failure. There's no other way to look at Kirk Cousins' tenure in Atlanta at this point and not say it's been a failure when you give him that kind of contract and commit money, not just this year, but next year as well, to a 37-year-old coming off an Achilles injury, and then you draft Michael Penix. Like, we all... We're like, it's going to probably be crappy, and it's been crappy. You know, it's never really, you know, going against the general consensus is not a bad thing to do. But when 99% of the general consensus is the Falcons are doing something stupid, you know, maybe, maybe they're right. Because you're not the Green Bay Packers. You're not this team that deserves the benefit of the doubt. And maybe we gave it to him because we were trying to be optimistic. I was just hopeful we were going to be watching something better on Sundays. A month ago, we were right. They did They did the right. A month later, we are losing in the most excruciating fashion. I mean, this loss to the Saints, that would have made us 7-3. and three. It would have put the division pretty much to bed. We go out, we lose that game. Young Young Hoku, Young Waku miss uncharacterly, uncharacteristically misses those field goal. Might not be uncharacteristic now. <laughs> I, I mean, he might him and Justin That's, Tucker. What the hell hell is in the water? What are uh, these kickers doing? The a year ago, they were the two most accurate kickers in NFL history. And, now, and, and neither of them can make a kick yeah. now. And for, I listen. We, we can we can sit here and argue about young way that's just not not the stuff i really care about like that's not the meat and potatoes of the issues that surround the atlanta falcons like yes do they, they might might need to cha change them at some point in the near future yes it's probably not going to happen this year they're probably not going to change kirk cousins and frankly we're going to have to watch this thing happen unfold for a the next five or, yeah for the next I, well, five or I'm six weeks i'm going to go out on a limb and say that he's going to be back and there's going to be a, some crazy maybe i don't i'm not even confident the falcons are going to make the playoffs anymore i'm really not how could uh, we you? got the Vikings. The Vikings are a real playoff team. They are seemingly in a better place with J.J. McCarthy, even on the IR with that season-ending injury, with Sam Donald as the stopgap option, which, you know, to me, they should just bring him back. Uh, and it shouldn't even be a stopgap option. Let J.J. McCarthy still learn. I don't know, but they surely did the right thing not paying Kirk Cousins and let the Falcons pony up 
uh, you know, all that $180 million for Kirk Cousins. I have no idea what their plan is going forward because he has a no trade clause. He has absolutely no incentive to pack up and move his family that just moved from Minnesota to Atlanta, which is where his wife's family is from. He has no incentive to, to, to acquiesce the Falcons' request of a trade. He, he's he, I wouldn't. You know, I would just collect my check and just mm. wait for the rookie to flame out. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, the the Falcons did. It, it's they funny. did it to himself. The Falcons did the same thing that the Saints did. Now they didn't put themselves in as bad of a cap situation, but they went out there and got a guy that hasn't been able to get it done. Kirk yeah. Cousins might be a slight upgrade over Derek Carr, maybe. Uh, maybe. Like, but like uh, coming off an Achilles injury, he's like desperate to compete right now, and then and then still not go all in by drafting Michael Penix. Never made any sense. They're it, laughing at us. And now we're seeing why it never made any sense. You know, it was a good story for nine weeks. We all know the truth now. Whether they, when they rip, rip the Band-Aid off remains to be seen. We'll get into more college football after the break.